Hello, Scaredy Cats, it's me, Scaredy Matt. Under the advice of my agent, I have now watched and will attempt to review Godzilla vs. Kong. Godzilla vs. Kong is a movie about what if Godzilla versus Kong, and, and pretty much nothing else. The giant lizard fights the giant ape a few times, actually, and in a few different environments. It's very nice to see the giant lizard fight the giant ape. The visual effects look very good, except for a couple of times when they don't, really. And I mean, what else is there to say? Like, what do you even say about the movie? It's just a giant lizard fighting a giant ape, not a monkey, an ape. Kong is an ape. People keep calling him a monkey. It's bullshit. If Kong is a monkey, then so too are we, humans, for we are apes. God damn it. Know the difference. I haven't seen the other films in the so-called monsterverse. Every film studio wants everything to be a Marvel movie now, so they're all trying to scrape together shared universes. That's the new thing studios try to do without understanding the appeal of. I guess I have seen Gareth Edwards' Godzilla, which I did not like. That movie was very dour, and while I appreciate a good slow burn, Godzilla 2014 was just flat out boring. I didn't care about the characters, I didn't like the way the monsters looked, and while I appreciate what they were going for, I feel like they didn't quite stick the landing. And it's funny in hindsight because that Godzilla feels very out of place in GVK. Godzilla feels hyper real and muted compared to the rest of the movie, which is bombastic and colorful and gleefully mindless. He doesn't get to do his iconic roar and they never really play his iconic theme song. They kind of mix both in a little bit, but not in a satisfying way. Maybe in 2014, the idea of a realistic, moody Godzilla felt like a good idea, but I much prefer the approach this movie took, where instead of making the film convincing by downplaying the fantastical elements, it instead just dialed up the fantastical elements everywhere else so that the giant creatures don't feel out of place. I don't need to see a giant monster destroying the world right now. The world has already been destroyed recently. I'm good, actually. King Kong in real life Hong Kong? Okay, whatever, that's silly. King Kong in fantasy cyberpunk Hong Kong? Okay, now that I can get into. Godzilla viewed through blurry footage in the background of news reports? Ugh. Wake me when there's a guy gam. Godzilla drilling a hole to the center of the earth with his atomic breath? Uh, yes please. That's the kind of imaginative goofiness that I remember from the kaiju movies of my youth. Aliens show up and tractor beam Godzilla to another planet, sure. Godzilla doing a victory dance? Why not? Whatever the hell Jet Jaguar is? Go for it, dudes! The monsters feel believable in silly movies. They fit in better. I'm taken out of a serious movie when someone says a phrase like Atomic Breath or Skull Island. But in a silly movie, you don't even notice. And I find that interesting, how sometimes making a movie less real makes it feel more real. By far the weakest part of GVK is the B-plot about Millie Bobby Brown and her friends. They're going around trying to uncover the secret of the evil mega corporation Apex. It's mostly comic relief, and the movie did not require this much comic relief because it's not exactly super serious otherwise. Just felt like an excuse to throw in some audience insert characters, and it grinds the movie to an absolute halt whenever they show up. If you watch the movie, I recommend you fast forward every time they're on screen you will miss nothing. Thankfully, the movie avoids the trap that a lot of versus movies fall into, where they make the characters feel equally powerful, no matter how little sense that makes. Batman can beat Superman with a robot suit. Jason can gap Freddy by taking him to the real world. Alien can fight Predator because lots of alien. GVK takes for granted that, of course, Godzilla would whip Kong's ass in a brawl. Of course, you're a fool if you think otherwise. Smarten up, get a grip. And then the film asks, Hey, if Kong, the little baby weakling, had to defeat Godzilla, the much stronger and cooler monster to save the world, how would he do that? Now there's an angle. At some point, and I have no idea how they pulled this off, I actually wanted Kong to defeat Godzilla, my best friend and surrogate father, may God forgive me. Spoilers from here on out. Turn off now to avoid spoilers. I don't know why anyone would care about spoilers in a movie like this, but people were mad last video where I gave a spoiler, so here's a spoiler warning. There were two endings I would have accepted for this movie. 
there are only two endings that possibly make sense for a movie titled Godzilla vs. Kong. One of them, obviously, is Godzilla winning. The other option is that they decide not to fight and become friends. These are the only two endings that would make this movie worth your time and money. Anything else is an insult to your intelligence and the art of filmmaking. It would not make sense if Kong won. It would not make sense if it was a tie. I do not want to see the big metaphor for an American war crime get defeated by the American film icon. And I do not want to see the king of the monsters unthroned by some ape. Wisely, the movie actually opts for both of these endings. Godzilla fucking wins. You heard me, right? They fight and Kong gets beaten and then they have to team up after it is definitively established that Godzilla is the greater and more powerful monster. He shows the weakling Kong mercy and allows him to leave. His mercy is rewarded when they team up to fight Mechagodzilla, which I still kind of can't believe they put in this movie. Like, I didn't think I would see Mechagodzilla in a blockbuster movie like that, but I'm very happy that I did. I don't like how Mechagodzilla got his name though. One character says, it's some kind of Robo Godzilla. And then another says, no, it's Mecha Godzilla. And sure, we, the audience, know that it's Mecha Godzilla, right? But the characters in the movie, how is Mecha Godzilla any better than Robo Godzilla? Both are perfectly descriptive names. What? Why would you correct someone? No, that's not Robot Godzilla. It's me mechanical. He's mechanical, not robotic. We, we, what the fuck are you talking about? These movies struggle in general with justifying silly names. I don't know why they called the monsters Titans instead of the far more interesting Kaiju. The term Titan makes them actually feel less powerful. Like something that's big, I guess, but not as big as a building like a Kaiju. Here's how I, here's how I would give Mechagodzilla his name in this movie. You'd, Hollywood, if you're paying attention, you can steal this, okay? You have the bad guy go, behold, the mightiest of all Titans, like his namesake, Kronos. And then he stands there like, Pretty cool, right? And the characters are like, that sucks. That name sucks. You should call him like Mecha Godzilla. That'd be cool. And the bad guy gets all huffy. He's like, well, we ran it by a lot of focus groups, okay? This name is gonna stick, trust me. Hard cut to a reporter on the ground in Hong Kong filming the fight saying, the two Titans seem to be fighting some sort of mechanical Godzilla. This Mecha Godzilla appeared from nowhere, though reports are coming in that blah, blah, blah. You get it. At the end of the day, the lizard and the ape fight. Isn't that what you wanted? Didn't you want to see the Lizard and Ape fight? The, the movie fulfills the brief. Here in Canada, only 18 people have been vaccinated, so we can't leave our homes. And sometimes I just want to watch a lizard hurt an ape quite badly. But at the end, I want both of them to learn a lesson about home is where you make it. Six claws up, watch it or don't. Who cares? Fuck you. I swear to God. What? Maddie, I got a hot tip on the next movie you gotta review. It's called Slacks. It's about a killer pair of jeans. You're fired. He's just kidding. He can't fire me. He doesn't have the authority. I'm star at a channel. I can fire him if I wanted, but I don't. I'm a nice guy. Follow me on Twitter. Duke Bobby. I gotta make him do the jeans movie too. You don't, you don't know that yet. I'm gonna make him watch the jeans movie.